DOM selection simply means to select the elements or the nodes from the DOM document. And this is the first step towards the manipulation. We select or grab an element and you start working on it. To select the elements, we have several different DOM methods, which are used in different scenarios and with different HTML structures. These methods are get element by ID, query selector, query selector all, get elements by name, get elements by tag name, and get elements by class name. So these are the six methods we use to select HTML from the DOM document. The first three methods get used a lot, but the others are also important, and we'll learn all of them. So let's start with the first method, get element by ID, and have some hands-on action. I've got a simple HTML with a header containing an image and navigations. So the method get element by ID allows you to grab a specific HTML element by using its unique ID. So in a page with tons of HTML elements, you can pinpoint a specific element using the method get element by ID. In my HTML, you can see our image element has an ID logo and the first anchor element also has an ID main page. So using these ID values, we can select both the elements in the JavaScript using the get element by ID method. So let's see this method in action. I'm going to select both the elements, the image element and the anchor element. So here you see the method in action. The method belongs to the document object. It can't be called without the reference. Into the method, we pass the ID of the element we want to grab, like logo and main page. The method's gonna return the element if the ID is found, and that element is then assigned to the variable. So let's take the cancel to see what do we get there. And here we have both the elements in the cancel. So after the selection, both the elements are available for the JavaScript. JavaScript can work on it. So that was the get element by ID method. It's simple and straightforward. Now, next we have query selector. Query selector is also a very useful method. It allows you to select an element based on its CSS selector. That means to the query selector method, you'll write the same selector that you use in the CSS for selecting the element. For example, in the CSS, you can select this image element using class selector, ID selector, or maybe the descendant selector. So the CSS selector is used in the query selector method, and it will give you the element. So let me show you a couple of examples. I will select this image element with the help of query selector method and by providing different selectors. So here you see, to the query selector method, I pass the class selector of the image element. And so you see in the cancel, we got the element, right? Now, instead of class selector, you can also use the ID selector because the element has an ID. If you get the same result, or you can write the descendant selector. Like this. So to the method, you will code the same selector that you use in the CSS. Let's now move on. In HTML, several elements may have the same class or the same selector. So in this case, we are a single selector selects multiple elements. Query selector is going to give you the first match. For example, to the selector method, if I provide a selector menu item. So in this case, query selector is going to give you the first match, the first element that matches the selector. And you see the first anchor element is returned by the method. So let's continue from here to the next one. The next method is query selector all method. It's also very useful. 
Query selector all is an advanced version of query selector. It will find all the elements that match a CSS selector. In the previous case, the selector menu item matches the four elements. But we got the first match using the query selector method. But if I use query selector all, I will get returned all the elements. So let's code this method and then we'll discuss more about it. Here we go. So the selector menu item has four matches. So we get four different elements. The first four anchor elements. So the return type isn't a single element. It can be more than one. So what do you think? What would be the type of this variable? A simple variable can't hold multiple values. And you know that. To save multiple values, we normally use array-like structure. So this variable is not a normal variable. It's a special variable which is called node list. In other words, a list of nodes. So it's an array-like structure, not the array. In the console, you will now see a node list with indices. And now here you see a node list with four components. So all the four ink elements are now in this array-like structure, node list. And using the indices, you can see here, you can loop through this list structure. And you can also have access to the individual element. And we usually use for each function to loop through all the components of the node list. So let me show you an example. I will apply the for each function to the list and loop through all the components, all the elements. So as we loop through all the components one by one, so we can perform any operations. So let's just say I want to count the number of characters to the text like home, services, about, and contacts. So in HTML, I'm going to return the text node. Into the text node, we are applying the length property. So let me refresh the page. And here you see the correct account of the text, of the text node that we have. So these were the three most commonly used selection methods. Uh, let's now move on. The next we have get elements by name. This method is also very handy and you're going to need it in several different situations. The method returns several HTML elements like query select all. When you observe the name, you see elements, right? Plural. So it returns several elements by their name. In order to demonstrate the method and give you a piece of example, I need to set up some more HTML. So hold on a second and let me put some more HTML. Now I see some more HTML. We have five different radio buttons and I will select all of them using the method get elements by name. So the method get elements by name gets elements by their given name. Given name means the name that we give to the element using the name attribute. Input is also a name, but it's a tag name. This one is the given name. So the elements by name method grabs the element with given name. Now you can see all the input elements have the same given name, rate. So I can use this name in the method to select all of them. So let's see a code example. Into the method, we pass the name. Simple as that. Let's take the cancel. Now you see once again a node list with five components, five elements, and they have their own indices. And using the for each function, we can walk through the list and perform operations. Let me show you an example on that. As you can see, one radio button is checked by default. And using JavaScript, we can find out the value of the checked button. So as I have all the input elements in the list, so I can simply apply for each function loop on it, as you walk through the components of the list, I will look for the checked component or checked radio button. So we are reading value of the checked radio button. 
and in our code okay radio button is checked as you can see here and this is the value we are trying to read here and so you see in the output if another radio button is checked let's say and the last one of our program we're gonna read its value so let's refresh the page now the button very good is checked and its value is read by the JavaScript so that was get elements by name method let's now move on our next method is get elements by tag name the name of the method reveals almost everything about its doing it returns elements by tag name tag name means the name of the HTML element not the given name this is the tag name div is the tag name or anchor is the tag name so we provide a tag name to the method and it returns all the tags that we have in the document now let's say if I want to select all the anchor elements in a page so I will code like into the method I will pass the name of the tag now the method is going to return all the anchor elements that we have and not only these anchor elements if you have others in the page you will get them also for example except these five anchor elements I put two more at the end of the page right so I will get these two also all of them so let's print the variable in the cancel and study the result now in the cancel you won't see a node list as before you would rather see another array like a structure which is called HTML collection so let me refresh the page now you see HTML collection which is also an array like a structure containing all the seven anchor elements and all the elements have their own indices the HTML collection differs from the node list in two different ways number one node list is a node list it contains all the nodes an element can have like text node attribute node comment node etc but this is not the main difference the main difference between the HTML collection and the node list is that HTML collection is live while the node list is static so what does it mean it means whenever you add or remove the specified element this HTML collection is gonna automatically update itself because the collection is live on the other hand node list is static it doesn't update itself automatically at the time when you add or remove elements so that is the main difference HTML collection is live whereas the node list is static so that was the get elements by tag name method and you will use it to select all the same type elements on a page let's say you want to apply the same style to all the paragraphs on a page then you can select them using the get elements by tag name method so let's now move on to the last one our last method is get elements by class name this method is also important and handy it returns the elements by their class name or names you can also specify more than one name now let's say I want to select all the elements on a page with class menu item so here we have four elements with the class menu items and down there here we have two more so in the JavaScript we write into the method we provide the name of the class So all the elements on the page with the class menu item are now selected and the return type of this method is also a HTML collection so let's first check the result in the cancel let me refresh the page now done there you can see an HTML collection with six elements so all the elements with the class menu item are now selected and the return type is HTML collection which is a live collection to the method you can also pass multiple classes so let me show you an example on that before we wind up this lecture in the HTML a group of elements can have their own classes as well as share classes for example our first four anchor elements share a same class menu item they don't have their own specific class right 
So I can assign a specific class to the element. Let's say one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, and four are specific classes to the elements. However, the menu item is the common class. So to the method get elements by class name, we can pass multiple classes. Let's say I want to select the elements have classes menu item one, right? So these are two classes. So I'm going to just pass the classes to the method. Just like this. So you see method can also accept multiple classes. So all the elements with these two classes are now selected. But as for now, in our case, there is only one element. And so you see in the artwork, HTML collection containing only the one element with class menu item one, right? So my dear listeners, that was all about DOM selection. As you can see, DOM provides a vast variety of selection methods. All of them are important. They have their own functions and they are good in their own way. So now you know how to select the DOM. In the next lecture, you will learn how to traverse the DOM and select parent, child, and sibling nodes.